Hey everybody, Matt here for Imagine Then Make. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to use LibreCAD to draw an eight point star. All right, so I've opened up a new document. We're on layer zero, which is where this text resides. It's the only layer right now that's visible. Before we start drawing, we're going to switch to layer one, and there's nothing on layer one right at the moment. Let me go through my current drawing preferences so you can see how I've got LibreCAD set up. For paper, I'm using letter size paper. I'm in portrait mode. Here in the US, letter size paper is eight and a half inches by 11 inches. For units, I'm working in inches. The grid is visible. Hopefully you can see it. And it's the orthogonal grid. The settings on these next two tabs are all the default settings. I haven't tinkered with them at all. Okay, I like to draw with the grid set up at 0 0.1 slash 1. So just as a quick review, that means that the distance between one of these dots to the next dot, either horizontally or vertically, represents one-tenth of an inch. And the distance between one of these long vertical lines and its neighbor represents one inch. Okay, so now we're going to get started drawing. So I like to use LibreCAD as a computerized pencil and piece of paper. So I do all of my thinking while I'm drawing. So if I make any missteps during the demonstration here, that's kind of why. So the goal here is to draw an eight-pointed star, and there's many different ways to accomplish that goal. So I'm going to try and show you a couple of different ways you can get there. We're going to start with the two-point line command. We're going to set our snap to grid switch on. So as I move my cursor around, it automatically snaps to every grid point. I'm going to left mouse click on the origin and then move the mouse up three long horizontal lines, which represents three inches. Left mouse click again. There's my line. If I press escape one time, now my line command is still active and I have my first three inch long vertical line. The end of this vertical line represents the tip of the first point in my eight pointed star. So to get the other seven points, we would need to draw seven more lines. So there's a couple of ways we could do it. We could continue with the two point line command left mouse click on the origin, move over three horizontal lines, left mouse click again, escape one time, left mouse click on the origin, move down three horizontal lines, left mouse click again, escape, left mouse click, left mouse click, escape. So now we have four of the eight lines drawn. To draw the other four lines, we could use the angle command. So I'm going to set the uh, length for the angle command to four inches. And I'm going to set the angle to 45 degrees. I move the mouse. It shows me the line that it's going to draw. I left click on the origin. And then there's my first line at 45 degrees. Now I'm going to mouse back up and left mouse click in the angle box and I want the next line to be right over this way so it's 90 degrees more than the last line that we drew. So if I left mouse click in the angle box and type in plus 90 and hit enter, what happens is it does math right in the angle box 
and draws the line for me. So now I'm going to left mouse click on the origin and there's my second angled line. Left mouse click in the angle box again, type in plus 90, hit enter. Left mouse click on the origin, left mouse click in the angle box, plus 90, hit enter. Left mouse click on the origin, escape, and there's my eight points. To make them all the same length, I could click on the circle and then center point command. We're still snapping to the grid and the center of our whole drawing is right on the origin. So if I left mouse click and then move the mouse up three horizontal lines or three inches, left mouse click again, hit escape. So now I've got a circle where these four lines here are all three inches long and these longer lines are all four inches long. So what we want to do is trim these four inch lines back down to three inches. So we can go over to this menu, choose trim. Down here it says select limiting entity. We want to use the circle as our limiting entity and we want to click on the part of the line we want to keep. So there it trimmed off the excess. Okay, so now if I press escape and then escape one more time, now I have the position of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have all eight positions for the points of my star. So that's one way I could get the eight points. Let me show you another way. So I'm going to highlight. these lines that I don't want anymore. It's a little bit of a challenge because my computer's a little laggy while it's screen recording. Okay, so that brings us to where we first started with one vertical line three inches long. Okay, so if I go back to the, um, well, let's highlight this line. I could just click on it to highlight it, or I press escape here twice. I could drag a box around it to highlight it. That's the second way I could highlight it. Go over to this menu and choose move and rotate. So now it's going to ask me to specify a reference point. Well, I want to rotate around the origin, so I'm going to click on the origin. And now it wants me to specify a target point. I'm going to click once again on the origin. And you can see that my angle is, well, it's set at 45 degrees, I think, from a prior command. OK, so I clicked a second time on the origin, and I got this Move Rotate Options dialog box. I want to make seven copies of the line that I highlighted. I want each copy to be 45 degrees. Um, I want 45 degrees between each copy, and I want to use the current layer, which is layer 1. So if I hit OK, there's my eight lines indicating where each of the eight tips for the eight-pointed star need to be. So that's a second way you can draw it. All right, carrying on, I think the first thing I'll do is hit Save. Always a good idea to save often. So now what I want to do is I want to bisect this angle on both sides of this vertical line. And I'll show you why I want to do that in a minute. What I'm really trying to do is create a section, which then I can move and rotate and create seven more copies to create my star. So let's go back to the angle command. And we'll leave the length at four inches. I think we're going to wind up trimming it again anyway. And for the first angle, let's do some math. I want to type in 45 
plus, and then open parentheses, 45 divided by 2, close parentheses. So I want to add half of this angle. So there's the line it's going to draw. I'm going to left mouse click on the origin. And there it is, like so. Let's left mouse click in the angle box. I highlighted the angle that's there. So now I want to do the same thing, only I want to start with 90 degrees plus open parentheses 45 divided by 2 close parentheses. And there's the second line I want to draw. Left mouse click at the origin, escape. And so now this part here represents the maximum size the section can be when it's copied seven more times and rotated about the origin. That way the sections won't overlap. Let's go ahead and trim these lines. So I can go to my circle and point command. Let's see, I'm, it's okay, I'm snapping on the origin, which is part of the grid. So left mouse click, and now I want to snap on this point, which is also part of the grid. Escape. So there's a circle. So if we go back to the trim command, choose the circle as the limiting entity, and then click on the section of the line I want to keep. Now I've trimmed those extra long lines. Let's hit escape a second time. Okay, so there's no particular reason why we need the circle right now. So let's click on that. And we don't need these extra lines. So let's click on these. If I press delete. Okay, so there's sort of the piece of the pie that can be replicated seven more times and rotated around the origin. And then they won't overlap. They'll be side by side. Okay, so this represents the tip of the star point that I'm working on. And what I want to do is draw a line down this way and a line down this way. So the question is, what angle should I draw? Well, let's stick with 45 degrees. So if I go back to my angle command, and we don't need a 4-inch length. Let's make it 2 right now. I'm sure I'm going to have to trim it. And if I type in minus 45... For my angle I'm still snapping to the grid which is fine because this point right here is on the grid so if I left mouse click there's my first line and now if I left mouse click in the angle box and I add another 90 degrees so my equation here is minus 45 minus 90 move the mouse away left mouse click on this point right here and there's my second line okay hit escape so now we want to do the familiar trim sequence want to i want to trim this long line first so we use this one as the limited entity click on the section we want to keep press escape use this as the limiting entity click on the line we want to keep now we want to use this as the limiting entity and click on the line we want to keep. Limiting entity, line we want to keep. Escape, escape. And there we have sort of a what I was thinking about, a section of a star, the point of a star. Okay, so let's save this. And now what we want to do is we want to move and rotate this and make seven more copies all 45 degrees apart from one another to create the next section of our star so i can left mouse click and drag a rectangle a rectangle around this to select it move over to move and rotate not move and copy but move and rotate it's going to ask me to specify a reference point. We're sticking with the origin. And now it says specify a target point. Sticking with the origin. Left mouse click again. Here's my move and rotate options box. I want to make seven copies. 
all 45 degrees apart from one another and we want to use the current layer which is layer number one hit OK and just like that he drew all those extra lines so now if we go back to the circle command, hit circle point, left mouse click on the origin, and then left mouse click on the end of the first point for our star, hit escape. That's kind of the eight-pointed star that I kind of had in mind. So let's hit save. And I'm about 15 minutes in or so, so we're going to call this video complete. For the next video, I'm going to copy this design onto another layer, say layer number two, and then play with some modifications to see if I can make it look a little bit different. So we'll do that in the next video.